This anxiety swells up in me and I just panic. It's a big fear. I get real panicky. Fear that something will happen. Claustrophobia. Turbulence. And even the thought of coming to an airport is, is real panic to me. I am licensed therapist and airline captain Tom Bunn. The first courses on fear of flying were started back in the 1970s. The one I initially worked on was started at Pan Am by Captain Truman Cummings. There were many people who'd got no relief at all. So in 1982, I founded SOAR. By adding anxiety control tools, we immediately produced better results than any of the other programs. Research study of our work was done at the University of Tennessee, which praised our work as highly effective. Determined to find an answer, something that would work for everyone, I became licensed as a therapist and then spent an additional five years studying Gestalt therapy, psychoanalytic psychotherapy, NLP, and research that would help us understand the part of the brain that processes visual information controls feelings. All we needed to do to control feelings was to find a way to control the thoughts that produce imagination. Once we found a way to do that, and to do it automatically, we were able to help everyone gain control. We had broken the code. We had finally discovered the way to automatically control fear, to automatically control anxiety, and automatically control claustrophobia and even panic when flying. The free video you're about to see will introduce you to that process. If you have only a mild problem with flying, the free video may be all you need. But what if you need more? What if your difficulty with flying is more than just mild? What if you've tried everything and gotten no help? No matter what you've tried, I believe we can still help. We provide the most effective help available anywhere. So effective, we even guarantee your success. When you fly after completing the full program, if you are not satisfied, you receive a full refund. The guaranteed program consists of two things, the SOAR video course on DVD, followed by one-to-one -one counseling with me, usually by phone. Psychology of Flight Anxiety teaches you about yourself. You learn how and why fear develops and what to do about it. The second set of DVDs, How Flying Works, will help you understand what can happen and what can't happen. And if it can happen, what we do in aviation to make sure it doesn't. Whenever there has been an accident, the cause of that accident has been determined and steps taken to make sure that that particular thing will never happen again. Now, since aviation has been around for over a hundred years, just about everything that can happen has happened and been fixed. So now, for an accident to happen these days, it has to be something that is very, very rare indeed, something that didn't even happen once in a hundred years. Of all the things that you could be doing on a given day, flying in a modern jetliner is one of the safest. So when you stop doing your usual daily routine and step aboard an airliner, you have actually made yourself safer. Maybe you think if anything fails, the plane will crash. No, no. For every device the pilots need, there's not just the main device, but there's also a standby device and a backup device, even more than one backup device. You never ever take off unless all your main systems, all your standby systems, and all your backup systems are working perfectly and we can tell in the cockpit that they are. That's what makes flying so safe. For example, when you land a Boeing 767, if you hit the brakes and they don't work, it automatically switches to a second system. What if the second system doesn't work? A light comes on. There's a switch. You flip the switch and you get a third system. What if the third system fails? It automatically switches to a fourth system. And if the fourth system fails, believe it or not, there's a fifth. A light comes on. 
you flip the switch by that light and you go to the fifth system. And I've never seen the first system not work. All this and much more is laid out for you in How Flying Works. The third part of the SOAR video course is the control of anxiety. Anxiety in any of its forms can be controlled automatically. I want you to understand how and I want to make this clear so it'll take a few minutes. I did a session once with an attorney in New York City and I asked him a question had he ever been in a truly life-threatening situation and he said yes he had. He said a man came into his office and put a gun to his head. I said I'm sure that qualifies. Now while the gun was against your head where were you? Zero to ten. He said, it was amazing to me after it was over how calm I was in the middle of it. He said, I was at a two. He said, but the next day I came to work and I was fine, but within 15 minutes I had become a total basket case. I couldn't do anything and I knew I wasn't going to be able to do anything for the whole day, so I went home. I came to work the next day, the same thing happened. Now, I have two things to explain here. First, why did he only go to a two out of ten? Well, we are the genetic product of thousands of generations. And if you go back thousands of years, maybe at that point some people, some went to an eight or a ten, and maybe even some to a zero. Well, there's an optimal level, and what is that? Well, zero isn't it. But if you went to 10, that's not a good thing either because it completely fills your mind and you can't use your mind. Now that's important because we humans, that's our strong suit. We're not the fastest of creatures and we're not the fiercest of creatures. We have to depend on the mind to get us out of tight situations. For example, suppose you're on the sidewalk and you see someone walking toward you with a Doberman on a lead and the Doberman picks up its ears, looks at you, and charges, pulls away from the person who's walking the dog. Well, what's going to happen is the fight or flight response is going to kick in. You're going to see the dog coming at you, and that's going to cause a reaction in the right side of the brain where emotions are controlled, which will cause hormones to go into your brain and body to rev you up to get you to do what? To run? That's one possibility. To fight, that's another possibility. But neither of those really is probably going to be a match for a Doberman. Maybe it's your mind you need to use and duck into a store and close the door. So the fight or flight response is something that has been around probably for as long as the human race has been around and it's been fine-tuned so that when people are in life-threatening situations Instead of going to zero, they go to two and focus exactly on that moment and no other moment. And they don't go higher because if you go higher, you wouldn't be able to use your mind as well. So what happened to the lawyer the next day? In the right side of his brain where emotions are controlled, the image of the gun to his head comes to mind again and it triggers the emotions. He goes again to a two. But the gun is not to his head. So what happens? Well. He starts doing what we could call Monday morning quarterbacking. He can start thinking, what if? What if I try to take the gun away from this guy? And suddenly he realizes, oh my God, I might have gotten shot. That then hits him with a second shot of hormones, enough to take him to zero to two. But he's already at two because those hormones are still active. So instead of going to, from zero to two, he goes from two to four. And then he has another thought. If I were shot, I'd be lying right here on this floor. And that hits him with another shot of hormones. And he goes from four to six. Well, then he figures someone would take him to the hospital. His wife would get a phone call that he's been shot. Her reaction takes him from six to eight. And his daughter says, Mom, what's going on? Here's the news and bursts into tears. That takes him to a 10. So he went home to be with his wife and daughter. What does this have to do with flying? There probably was a time when you took your first flight and you must have realized that the plane could crash. That one thought, though, is only enough to take you to a two.
But after that, you pay attention to the news. Over time, you collect a file folder, disastrous things that could happen to me if I fly. When you start to fly, or even think about flying, you open that file folder, and the first possibility comes to mind, it takes you to a two. The next possibility comes to mind, it takes you two more up to a four. And then the next possibility comes to mind, it takes you even farther. Well, by the time you get to the fifth thought, probably the hormones from the first thought have worn off a bit. And so instead of going to a 10, I suspect you go to only about an eight until something very remarkable happens. Donald Hebb, a famous neurologist who taught at McGill University in Montreal, there's something named after him called the Hebb's axiom. The Hebb's axiom is this, neurons which fire together, wire together. And what this means is, when you have thought one, a certain set of neurons fires. When you have thought two, a different set of neurons fire. And thought three, yet another set. After you think thought one, thought two, thought three, thought four, thought five, on many different occasions, at some point, they become one and they fire together. And then, instead of going two, four, six, eight, 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 you go to two, right up to 10, right up to panic. That's the thing that we have to change. You see, each thought causes a certain amount of anxiety through a certain amount of hormones being released. One thought though, like one drink, doesn't cause a problem. One thought after another, like one drink after another, does cause a problem. What can we do? Did you ever drive a stick shift? When you were first learning, you had to think consciously and deliberately where to move the shift lever, when to push the clutch pedal, and how to apply the gas. As you were consciously and deliberately doing these things, your unconscious mind was watching. After a while, your unconscious mind had learned how to do it and was doing it for you. In the third set of DVDs, Control of Anxiety, I'm going to lead you through the training that will provide you with that kind of automatic control, only instead of learning how to shift your car automatically without thinking, we're going to control anxiety automatically without thinking. You and I will go through every step, step by step together. When you get on the airplane, your mind will take care of the anxiety automatically. This automatic control makes the SOAR program more effective than any form of help you can find any place else. The fourth part of the SOAR video course is at the airport. We selected a group of volunteer fearful flyers and put them together with a United Airlines maintenance supervisor. We told them to ask every question that they could come up with about how planes are maintained, how mechanics are supervised, how they as passengers can be confident that every job has been done right, and how they can be sure the plane is really ready for flight. Here's a sample. Can you tell me something about the maintenance of the engine? We do what they call on-wing maintenance. And we have a special uh, uh, scope, fiber optic uh, scope, where we have people that have gone to special training, and they look on the inside of the engine for defects. And we have enough experience with, with this that we can say we are going to replace this engine uh, in, uh, in uh, two weeks or three months or, and plan it that way so that we take it off, send it back for major overhaul prior to its ever having any failure. How often do they check the engines? The, the boroscope procedure that I talked about where we put the fiber optic thing in is done every 300 flying hours. My dad owns an airport and an airplane and a friend came in and uh, left his plane overnight. Small, it was a Cessna. A mud bee made a nest. See, that's what I'm, I'm afraid about, the, the little technical little bee that got stuck in the fuel line. What the aircraft manufacturers have done today is they have produced an airplane that has a main system, an alternate system, and a backup system, and an emergency system. 
so that if the little mud dauber bee plugs this up, all it does is turn on a light somewhere that tells the flight crew the next time they land, tell somebody that they got this little light on. Well, and the airplane it? operates 100% normal. Do we have a backup system for sure. the light? Sure, sure, absolutely. It automatically switches to its second system and operates perfectly fine. In this fourth set of DVDs at the airport, I'll take you into the cockpit of a 747. I'll teach you how to make a takeoff. I'll teach you how to put the plane on autopilot, how to make an automatic landing. In this set of DVDs, we take a flight together with scenes both from the cabin and in the cockpit. Whether you have never flown, stopped flying, or continue to fly with great difficulty, we can help. I cannot tell you what a, what a feeling it is to stand in Washington, D.C. and feel great. I feel like a whole new world, well, an old world has come back to me, I should say. You know, I can, I can start considering, you know, on my vacation going to Europe, going anywhere that I can afford. A feeling of wonderful accomplishment. I really didn't see how it would connect, but it did. There's something about it that just clicked. We have what works, and we guarantee it. When you fly, after completing the full program, if you're not satisfied, you'll receive a full refund. Being both an airline captain and a licensed therapist and having worked successfully with over 5,000 people for 25 years, most of whom thought nothing would work, I have good reason to believe that what I've learned through all this can help you too. If your difficulty with flying is mild and what you've seen is enough, that's fine. But if you need more help, there are some options to consider. If you want the maximum help available, your next step is easy. You need to order the guaranteed program, which includes counseling to make sure you have everything you need to fly comfortably and confidently. But what if your flight is soon or even tomorrow? Rapid Relief provides the maximum help possible in the shortest time. Watch the first 90 minutes of the video and then call me. I want to make sure you're ready. If you have more time after our phone session, there's an additional 90 minutes of video for you to view before taking your flight. After your flight, you have an option to switch to the full length course. If you switch, what you pay is 100% transferable toward the full length course. As soon as you place your order, you'll receive an email with instructions on how to start viewing your selections online. Even if your flight is tomorrow, what you do now can make a huge difference in how you feel.